Hello everyone, welcome to Date Heard of Mars Recode Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is arithmetic slices. What we need to do? Here in this question, we are given an integer array. We need to identify the count of arithmetic progressions that exist in this array. And how do you define arithmetic progression? It consists of at least three elements and if the difference between any two consecutive elements happens to be same. We need to identify those subarray count which form an arithmetic progression. Here in this example, they have provided us with an array with four elements, one, two, three, four. And there are three possible arithmetic progressions. The first one is one, two, three. The second one is two, three, four. And the third one is one, two, three, four in totality. I'll be talking about this approach by the presentation and these examples. So let's quickly hop on to it. Arithmetic slice, lead code 413. So as per the definition of arithmetic progression, you can simply represent the elements as a, a plus d, a plus 2d, a plus 3d. If you are given an integer array that forms an arithmetic progression, then they will follow this kind of a pattern. And using this, we can generate a formula. If we subtract second element from the first element, what do we get? We get the difference. And again, if we subtract the third element from the second one, these two, what do we get? We get the difference. And in case there are three elements in your input array and you want to check whether they form an arithmetic progression kind of a thing or not, you can use this up to actually compute it. And we'll exactly follow this in the example. So I have taken a slightly longer case here so that you get a good hold of the concept. We have an array as 1, 4, 7, 9, 11, 13. 15, 23, 29, 35. And in question, it is given that the length of the AP should be greater than or equal to 3 in the worst case. So what we will do, we'll start from the first three elements, which are 1, 4 and 7. We will apply this formula over here and check whether we get an answer or not. So what is 4 minus 1? 4 minus 1 is 3. 7 minus 4 again happens to be 3. As a result of which, we are able to identify our first AP progression ending at 7. So let's write 1 here. And since here uh, the length is less than 3, we'll simply go and write 0, 0. So far we have identified one progression, 1, 4 and 7. Pretty awesome, straightforward, nothing complicated there. Let's proceed ahead. Let's look out for 9. And at 9, let's redo the same thing. What do we see? We see that 7 minus 9 happens to be 2 and 7 minus 4 happens to be equal to 3. It's not forming an AP progression because the differences are different in nature. We have the difference 3 here, we have the difference 2 here. As a result of which, we'll update it to 0 because it's not an AP case. Let's proceed ahead. Let me just change the color of pen for better understanding. And now we have 11. Again, what we will do, we'll calculate the difference between third and second element, which is 2 in this case. 11 minus 9 happens to be 2 and again 7, 9 minus 7 again happens to be 2. That means both are equal as a result of which they form an AP progression. What we will do? We will simply update the value to 1. So here we identified another progression 7, 9 and 11. Let's proceed ahead. This case is very interesting so listen to it very carefully. The next element that we have is 13. Let's again check whether they form an AP progression or not. The difference between 13 and 11 is 2 and 11 and 9 is again 2. As a result of which we can say that we got an AP progression over here. However, there's another possibility as well. So one AP progression is 9, 11 and 13. The other AP progression could be 7, 9, 11, 13. Why I am saying this? Because in the previous state, we already have one stored here. We'll reuse this value and we will add one to it and the answer here would be updated to 2. How did we conclude it? Because the difference between 9 and 2 was 9 and 11 was already forming an AP progression with the difference 2 
we got another ap progression containing these three elements 9 11 and 13 with the same difference as a result of which the total number of possibilities increased to 2 so whatever previous value is stored over here we are going to reutilize it we'll add 1 to it and the answer becomes 2 for this particular case let's proceed ahead next we have is 15 so let's check whether they forming an ap progression or not 15 minus 13 is 2 13 minus 11 is again 2 that means it form an ap progression so what we are going to do we'll simply use the previous value add 1 to it and the answer here becomes 3 and what will be the possibilities the first one would be 11 13 and 15 the next one would be 9 11 13 15 15 and the third one would be 7 9 11 13 15 Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is twenty three. So are they forming an AB progression? Twenty three minus fifteen is eight. Fifteen minus thirteen is two. They are not forming an AB progression. As a result of which the value becomes zero. Let's proceed ahead. Next we have twenty nine. Twenty nine minus twenty three happens to be six. Twenty three minus fifteen happens to be eight. It's not forming an AB progression. We'll skip it. Let's proceed ahead. We have thirty five. 35 minus 29 happens to be 6. 29 minus 23 again happens to be 6. We again found one possibility for an AB progression. We'll update the answer to 1. Now comes the question: How are we going to find out the final value? We'll add these elements up. What do we get? 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. And there are 8 total 8 possibilities in this entire array that are forming an AB progression. this kind of approach is known as dynamic programming approach because you are using the previously computed values to actually find out your answer at your next level to conclude it further let's quickly have a look at the coding section the time complexity of this approach is order of n the space complexity here is again order of n because you are using a dpra but i'll tell you a slightly trickier way in which it can be solved in space complexity of constant time So let's quickly move on to it. Here I've created a DPRA for actually identifying the arithmetic progression count at each index. I've taken a total variable that will give me the answer. I start the iteration on the second index up till i is less than array dot length, and with each iteration, I'm incrementing the pointer. I, I I again use the same formula as I talked about in the presentation. Array of i signifies the third index. Array of i minus one signifies the second index, and array of i minus two. signifies the first index so it it is same as in the ppt third minus second happens to be equal equal to second minus first if that case is found out it's a happy case what do we do we we use the previously computed value at dp of i minus 1 index and add 1 to it otherwise we'll simply reset it to dp of i to 0 and with each iteration i'm adding whatever value has been set at the dp of i index in my total and i simply return it in the end so let's try this up accept it 100 times faster now comes the question can we improvise on the space complexity the answer is yes how can we do that i have also coded it up here i have taken a previous count variable and a total variable which is acting in a similar fashion so previous count is actually responsible for storing the value at the previous index we actually don't need the entire dpra we are just interested in keeping the track of the previously computed answer as a result of which i have just replaced uh, the previous count whenever there is a matching case to previous count plus 1 and in case it's a negative case i reset the previous count to 0 again the complete algorithm remains the same so let's try this too accepted pretty awesome this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it also if you are interested in following up the second question which is arithmetic slice 2 i have already coded this up in the month of september 2021 do give it a shot it's a harder question than this question but worth giving worth giving a try i hope you enjoyed today's session if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day hide and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye